This video has been sponsored by Meso CNC Controllers. Welcome to my diecast plating guide. In this video, I'm going to go over how to copper, nickel, and chrome plate diecast cars at home. This process will work on any diecast car, but for this video, I'll be using several of these Hot Wheels Corvette Grand Sport Roadsters. As you might have guessed, before you can plate, you need to take the car apart and remove the paint. For the sake of brevity, I've gone ahead and done just that. If you're unfamiliar with taking the car apart and removing paint, I'll leave a link to a how-to video below. To do the plating, I'll be using pre-built kits I purchased from Micromart that a subscriber pointed out to me. I'll of course leave links to these kits below. They run around $50 a kit and come with everything you need to plate the car, including the plating bath, the power supply, and the anode. You of course don't need a kit to plate cars at home if you have the means to make the plating solution. However, that can be rather tricky as most common methods of plating don't actually work on diecast. The first metal I'll plate will be copper. I'll be plating all three cars in copper as it's required as a strike plate to get to the other two metals. These plating kits are designed to copper plate directly to the diecast, which is really convenient. The setup is simple. You pour the solution into a container that the car will fit into and attach the positive or red lead to the anode. In this case, I'll be using some copper strip that I have, but the kit also comes with a copper wand. The negative side will attach to the die cast part. I'm using my own power supply here so we can watch the needle indicating how much amperage is being used. Later, I'll use these supplied power bricks. Before I attach and then submerge the car, it was thoroughly washed and zep degreaser. You can use whatever degreaser you want. Brake clean works really well, as does 91% isopropyl alcohol but you must remove any dirt or oils from the surface of the die cast before you start plating. Failure to do this will give poor plating results. With the car clean, I can attach the negative or black lead to the car and drop it into the plating solution. It's important to move the car around as the copper will be applied in greater amount in the direction of the anode. This can be fixed if the container was made out of copper, but I don't have one, so I'll be moving them around a lot. I'm unsure if the copper being applied from the solution is being replaced by the copper from the anode. If it is, then this bath should last for some time as long as the parts are clean and it doesn't get contaminated. I get the feeling that there may be some other conditioners and brighteners in the bath that may get used up over time. So I'll let you know how long this bottle goes and how many cars I could plate from it in a future video. The kit does come with two bottles and they will let you purchase the solution by itself for a much cheaper price than the kit. So here are the three cars after I was done. Each car was in the plating solution for about three minutes. After the three minutes, I removed the car and then washed it off with some dish soap and water and then allowed it to dry. Earlier when I removed the paint, I went over each car with some 4 aught steel wool to brighten up the metal and clean off any oxides and paint residue. You can pre-polish the metal before you plate in copper or polish after the copper is applied like I'm about to do. For the nickel and chrome plating, the car must be polished before plating. This is due to the fact that these metals are much harder and thus much more difficult to polish after they have been applied. I chose to polish with a soft buffing wheel and some metal polish. Later you can see me using a more aggressive polishing wheel, but I recommend using these before the copper plate as they do tend to remove the copper layer. This cotton buffing wheel is much softer and will not remove the copper plating as easily. If you do polish before the plate, then you'll also need to lightly polish after the copper is applied as it will have a light haze to it. Now that I have the cars copper plated, I'll pick one out to be chrome plated. I've been calling it chrome, but really it's just nickel plating with a lot of other chemicals to make the nickel look like chrome. Nickel by itself has a straw color to it. This bath will give the nickel a more blue color, like you see in chrome. Nickel can be polished to a near chrome finish if done right. It's unlikely you'd want to do real chrome plating at home anyway. The chemicals are extremely toxic and disposal costs would make this many orders of magnitude more expensive, not to mention the legal ramifications of having these chemicals in a residential area. The process is exactly the same as the copper, the only difference is that I'll be using the provided power supply and the stainless steel anode. Again, I'll need to move the car and anode around to be sure I get good coverage. If you were wondering, yes, you must have the copper strike plate in order to nickel plate. The nickel will not plate directly to the die cast. I should note that these chemicals are considered safe. Uh, safe in the same vein as oven cleaner is safe. I'm wearing latex gloves and eye protection as it is recommended. This chrome bath does have extra warnings having to do with cancer risks, so keep that in mind. While I'm here, I'll go ahead and nickel plate the other car. It's exactly the same process as the chrome because, like I said, they really are both nickel. 
So just like with the copper, I'll lightly polish the nickel and the chrome cars. I'm going to continue to call it chrome to make things easy. Okay, so here are the results. First up is the copper plated car, which looks nice and shiny. And then I have the nickel plated car, which has that very light straw color. Hopefully you can see that. And then last is the chrome car or the blue nickel, which definitely is probably my favorite. It really pops. Now as a point of comparison, I'll add in a zinc plated casting. As you may know, I use a lot of zinc with my Spectraflame paint, and I will probably continue to do that in the future. The difference between the zinc and the nickel is very striking, but I do not think it will be as noticeable once the Spectraflame is applied. But of course, I'll test this out in a future video. Some time ago, I did a modern Hot Wheels twin mill that was Spectraflame on the front and metal on the back. I think nickel plating that car would have improved the look compared to the polished die cast. I wanted to see how polished I could get the nickel to go, so I took the chrome car and then switched out my soft buffing wheel for a standard polishing wheel that Dremel makes. I repolished the casting with the same metal polish as before, but with this more aggressive wheel. The instructions mention that the nickel is harder to polish, however, I was able to get the nickel a little bit more shiny using this method. I was curious what the copper plated car would do if I polished it with the same wheel and polish, and this is how it turned out. It seemed to polish the copper right off. However, since the casting is much more polished than before, I'll replate this car in copper and you'll see how it came out here at the end. So here's the car before I remove the paint. The first car you see after this is the new polished copper car. I actually don't like the polished copper as copper. I replated it and then lightly polished with a soft buffing wheel and the result looks more like polished gold than copper. So if I need a gold plated car, then this is probably what I would do. But if I want a copper car that looks more like a US penny, then I would recommend not polishing it. As I stated before, I bought all this from Micromark. Full disclosure, I was not contacted nor sent these items to review. A subscriber sent me the links and asked that I check them out, and I went out and bought them. If you live in the US, then getting these items shipped to you is not an issue. If you live outside the US, it still may be possible. You'll have to check with Micromark. You can also check with Caswell Plating. They are the company that made these kits. Caswell specializes in all things plating, and it's probably more likely to know how to legally ship you chemicals compared to Micromark, who doesn't specialize in plating and is more of a distributor. So what are my thoughts on these kits? The copper plating is definitely worth the price. Plating these cars in common copper salts like copper sulfate won't work because copper sulfate is corrosive and will dissolve your car before any copper is plated onto it. The copper solution used in this video is not corrosive. As such, you can plate directly to the die cast. Also, as I mentioned before, these chemicals must have brighteners and conditioners in them because they plate to a mirror polish. Or another way to say that is, if your metal is polished, then the plating comes out polished. Most homemade plating baths can't do that. Last, the copper is going to come in really useful when soldering die cast. See my previous video if you'd like to see this in action. As for nickel, I'm glad to have them, but I can't see using them as much as zinc and copper. Where they really look good is on a car that I want to be bare metal, like this Roadster. Of the two, I really like the chrome. The darker metallic look that the blue nickel gives is something I can't achieve with zinc. Anyway, I'm curious which one you like the most, so please let me know below what your favorite is. As always, I want to thank everyone for watching, and I will see you next time. Well hey, you stuck around. Your patience should be rewarded. This is some footage that I took that I originally planned to be in the main portion of this video but later decided to edit it out because it really didn't have much to do with what I wanted to get across in this video. But then I thought why not just add it to the end for those of you who actually watched the complete videos or those of you who are addicted to the autoplay feature. I placed one of these Corvettes in my laser and then selected a flame pattern and let the laser cut that into the car's paint. The laser has enough power to vaporize the paint, but not enough power to do anything to the metal. This is a full spectrum hobby laser. I get asked about it each time I use it in a video, so better just to tell you now. Here's how the car looks after I pulled it out of the laser. You can still see that there's some paint on the front of the car, so I'll use a disposable paintbrush to apply some aircraft paint remover to remove this paint. I had a lot of trouble getting this yellow paint off all these cars. Yellow is notoriously difficult to remove for some reason. Here you can see what the front end looks like after the paint was removed. 
I did go over this with some 4 aught steel wool just to remove any paint residue. Next I polished the Zamac metal with a polishing wheel and some metal polish. This is the more aggressive polishing wheel. While it can remove the paint, it would take much more polishing to remove it than is required to polish the metal. After the metal was polished, I degreased the car and then used the copper plating kit to plate it in copper. This was done exactly the same way as you saw before. The only difference is that I left it in much longer, for about 6 minutes compared to the 3 minutes earlier. This allowed the copper layer to really build up. After the plating was done, I simply removed the rest of the paint. Now I found that using some triple lot steel wool looked the best, but decided to polish the car and found that it made the copper blend into the Zamac metal. And this is why I decided not to put this in the main video. But hey, thanks for watching the video to the end, and I'll catch you in the next one.